this just in. Breaking news. Don't tune out or click away. Let's get right on over to the video to see what's happening. Oh, yawning kitten is so fluffy and adorable. That level of cuteness just makes me melt. And you can always count on Banana News <laughs> to bring you the up to the minute first hand account on the most adorable animals. I'm Kylie, and this is my co host Banana the Beta Fish, another adorable animal. Seeing that video of those kittens just makes me think that cats can do some pretty incredible things that seem almost impossible. Like falling from a place up high, like really high, and almost always landing on their feet. Or slip through the smallest of holes when it seems like they shouldn't be able to fit. Today we're going to discover some amazing truth that's going to help us understand that God can do the impossible. And we're going to learn that we can have faith when something feels impossible. In our first segment, we challenged some kids to do everything in their power to try not to laugh at some funny videos. Impossible or not? Let's check it out. Hey guys! Hey. Hey. Are you ready for the don't laugh challenge today? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Cool, so basically you're gonna get to watch some funny videos and the challenge is to not laugh at them. Don't laugh. Don't, don't, do, you're already laughing! All right, <laughs> to make it even more fun, you will get to take a big drink of water and hold it in your mouth before you watch each video. You both start with six points while you watch the video. If you laugh and spit out the water and make a big smile or whatever, you're basically gonna lose one of those points. The person with the most points left after we watch all six videos, we could say wins the challenge. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great, so for all of you watching, you can play along too, either with or without water. Keep track of your own points and have fun. All right guys, here is the first video. Nice. Well, that was the last video, and 
Oh yeah, you made quite a mess, I can tell. But that's all we have for today's Don't Laugh Challenge. Say goodbye! Bye! 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 Bye. <laughs> <laughs> 187,000 cards away from beating the world record. Maybe 
I can build a motorized porta potty instead. Huh? That's already been done before? Ugh. Well, how about we check in with our very own Nana News to see what's shaken. Ah, <sighs> this just doesn't look right. I've been trying to paint this picture and it just doesn't seem like it's working. Ah, <sighs> this project may be impossible. You know, there's a lot of situations in the Bible that seemed impossible. But with God's power, He proved that there was nothing impossible for Him. Take Sarah, for example. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered Him faithful who had made the promise. Hebrews 11.11 11. Sarah was Abraham's wife. She's in the Hall of Faith chapter because she had faith that God would keep his promise. God is always faithful, doing what he says he will do, even when it seems impossible. Aha! I know what to do with this painting. <sighs> Sarah had faith that God would keep his promise and give her and Abraham a child. Stay tuned to see what happens next. Thanks, Nana. Now, let's dive into the deep end of the true Bible story pool as we learn all about how Sarah had faith even when things seemed impossible. Guys, have you ever wanted something so, so badly that you thought you would do anything to have it? Like, you don't understand how you could live your life without it? Like an adorable puppy? Or a horse? Or a trip? to Disney World? Or maybe you would just really like to go on a cruise, you know, across the ocean. Or maybe you want a little baby brother or sister. Well, whatever it might be. Toys, more time with friends, a free and private candy store in your own basement, yeah, yeah. Whatever it is, nearly every person who has ever lived has wants and desires throughout their life. And Abraham and Sarah were no different. I mean, what's one thing you think that they wanted? Well, back then, families relied on their children, especially the sons, to carry on the family name, business, and legacy. <laughs> that sounds important. And back then, it was super duper important. But there was a problem. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had not been able to bear children for him. Genesis 16.1. So Sarah, called Sarai here, she was barren, and that meant that it was not possible for her to have children. And remember, back then, that was a huge problem. There would be no one to carry on the family name. Wait a second, didn't God make a promise to Abraham that his descendants would be as many as there are stars in the sky? Hmm. But how can they get all those descendants if they don't have a child to have more children? And then those children to make more children, and those children to have children's children, and children, and more children, and more children, and as many as there are stars in the sky. It's a lot of children. Well, is anything really impossible for God? No way. God had a plan. God always has a plan. And when God promises something, you better believe that he will always keep his promise. In the Bible, in Genesis chapter 18, it explains that um, one day the Lord appeared to Abraham, who was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. 
Well, Abraham looked up and he noticed three visitors, the Lord and two others. Abraham immediately bowed low and offered them shade from the sun, water to wash their feet, and a meal to refresh them before they continued on their journey. And they agreed. So Abraham and Sarah prepared a grand meal for the visitors, and Abraham waited in the shade while they ate. Well, eventually one of the visitors asked Abraham where Sarah was. She's inside the tent, Abraham said. One of the men then said, I will return to you about this time next year, and your wife Sarah will have a son. What an odd thing for a visitor to say. But remember, this was the Lord, so this was God speaking. Well, when Sarah heard what the visitor had said because she was listening from the tent, she laughed to herself. <laughs> I mean, not loud enough for anybody else to hear, but she laughed because she and Abraham were super old and she couldn't bear children in her body. I mean, she was pretty much like, ha, ah, ah, that's funny, yeah, that's not gonna happen. Well, God, who knows everything, knew what Sarah was thinking and he questioned Abraham. Why did Sarah laugh? Why did she say, can an old woman like me have a baby? God said, is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return about this time next year and Sarah will have a son. Then the Lord and the other two visitors spoke with Abraham a little bit longer and then they left. God said that he would give Abraham and Sarah a son. Well, Sarah didn't believe it because she felt that it was impossible. But God said, is anything too hard for the Lord? Well, is anything too hard for the Lord? <gasps> oh, 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 pick me, pick me. I know, I know the answer. Yeah, <gasps> the answer is no, no way. Nuh uh, nothing. Ain't nothing too hard for God. You got that? Because nothing is impossible for God. That's why we can have faith when something feels impossible. Come on guys, say it with me because it's true. Have faith when something feels impossible. Did Sarah have faith even though she felt it was impossible to have children? Well, at first it seems she didn't because she laughed at the idea and thought they were way too old to have kids. But I wanna show you something um, that Sarah said when Isaac was born. And Sarah declared, God has brought me laughter. All who hear about this will laugh with me. Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse a baby? Yet I have given Abraham a son in his old age. That's Genesis 21, six through seven. Okay, so who did Sarah give credit for the birth of Isaac? God. She said that God brought her laughter. <laughs> and that reminds me about that moment at the tent you know, to us humans, the idea of having children in old age and when you're not physically able to even have them seems impossible, but God can do anything. And if you're not so sure you believe yet, well, check this out from our very own Pastor Woody. I, I can't help but tell you this story. Many of you, most of you probably heard it, but when it happened, I made a promise to God that every time I got a chance the rest of my life, I would repeat this story. It had to do with my wife uh, some years ago, and she started to lose uh, sensation and function in this side of her body. So very quietly, which is kind of the way she operates, she went to the doctor. And the doctor, within a few minutes, said, I think you have a brain tumor. And so I sent her for an MRI. The, the report came back, the MRI came back, and she had a brain tumor. It was in her brain stem. It was so deep, there was no way they could operate on it. Uh, because they would do far more damage than even to not operate on it. So there weren't any good options here. Now, I remember hearing about that, and you can imagine what it did to me. I went to the elders then that were, I was serving with here at Blue Ridge, and when I told them, we just spontaneously almost, we just fell on their knees and began to pray. 
Now, the next day we had a staff meeting and they prayed for us as well. And then that, during that period of our life as a church, we had Wednesday night meetings. And at one of the, the, the next Wednesday night meeting, uh, as elders, we prayed for Nan and the congregation prayed with us. Now, I didn't come out of this tradition, so this is sort of unusual for me. But I said, you know, I told Nan, that's my wife, I said, I think something happened tonight. Again, I, didn't, I don't come out of that, you know, that background. Uh, and so I, but I just had this distinct sense that something had happened. So I told her, I think you need to get another MRI. She said, I don't think we need to spend $1,700 to tell us something we already know. But she went ahead and did it. And when he came back, we went to, in to talk with the neurosurgeon. He said, you still got a tumor, but it's not acting like a tumor anymore. It is shrinking. And so we went on for another six or eight weeks. And I said, I think you should go back for another one. Because if God is doing something here, we, we need to mark it. So she went back, had a third MRI. We went in to talk with the neurosurgeon and he came in and he said, I don't understand it, but you don't have, any, you don't have a tumor anymore. Have faith when something feels impossible. Having a brain tumor that can't be operated on feels like an impossible situation. Pastor Woody knows that prayer is powerful and that God hears our prayers and that if anyone could heal his wife, it would be God. So in faith, Pastor Woody continued to pay the money to get more brain scans done so that they could see God at work, shrinking the brain tumor. And God did what seemed impossible because you know what? It never was impossible for him. God's plan for Nan was for her to be completely healed of the tumor. And God's plan for Abraham and Sarah was to have a child. And they did. They gave birth to Isaac, who was only the beginning of more and more and more and more and more and more and more children, children everywhere, as many as the stars in the sky. Woo! God always keeps his promises. And because of that, we can have faith in him. So... Have faith when something feels impossible. We can have faith even when facing things that seem impossible. Hmm. Now, what is faith anyways? Let's look to our memory verse for the answer. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Hebrews 11.1 1. Having faith means having the confidence that God is good and that he will do what he says he will do. It means trusting him even when we don't see what comes next, or it seems like it is impossible. The next time you face a situation that seems impossible, pray and ask God for help and trust in his plan, even when you don't get the answer you're looking for. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, I just thank you for today and the truth that we learn in your message, Father, that you can do the impossible. And so, Father, I just pray that we would really lean on that and we would trust you and your plan even when we don't fully see it. God, I just love you and I thank you. And we give you this day, and it is in your son Jesus' mighty, awesome, precious name we pray. Amen. Well, that's it for this episode of Banana News. It's bananas! From myself, Banana the Beta Fish, and everyone here at BR Kids, we want you to know that God loves you, we love you, and we'll see you next time. Hmm. Well, I wasn't too good at building a house out of the cards, but maybe this'll be better. Ugh.